Welcome back to the shop. Today I've got a micrometer pharmacy scale or kitchen scale, whatever you want to call it. It has this sort of scoop. It's unclear to me with the, the handhold on it, it. It sort of leads me to believe that you know they may have gone over and scooped up the flour or whatever they've got, and then just brought this back over, or you know they would have taken a small hand scoop and refilled it. Anyway. This scale has been in the family for a very long time. And this scale has been in the family longer than I've been in the family. And the reason I know that is because my mother would tell stories about bringing me and my, my two brothers home from the hospital and using this scale to weigh us. This is, you know, how she kept track of us. Gaining weight, losing weight, all this other stuff. <laughs> and this this goes up to 10 pounds. Uh, so anyway, it's it's you know, hard to believe that I was fit in this at one point in time. So, you know, this has got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, nostalgia or whatever with the family, you know, um, sentiment. And anyway, it's pretty rough. It's been sitting around for, you know, at least 40 some odd years. And, and you can start to see that the rust is coming through pretty strong at this marble base. And it's even though it's been inside, in the, in the AC, it's still, you know, progressively getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, there are some larger problems in the sense that the bubble level is broken out of here. I am actively trying to uh, figure out how to, how to what, what you do when you break a bubble level other than buy a level and <laughs> that's the same size and disassemble it. Anyway, um, but I think the first step to this is, is to disassemble it and there's some considerations that I think I need to take with this in the sense that marble is sort of a pervious surface. It was not sort of, it, it is a pervious surface. And if I were to go through and let's say I use BP Blaster or something like that, and I'm not saying PB Blaster is going to stain it or anything like that, but I, but I would say that there might be certain certain penetrants and, 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 and penetrating oils and things that might be more inclined to stain this marble. And what I want to do before I do anything, before I start soaking these bolts down, because one, I don't want to strip anything, Two, I don't want to break anything off, and three, I don't want to stain this marble. So, I'm going to do a little bit of research, well, I've done a little bit of research on it, and I think that that the most prudent thing for me to do is, is use something that, you know, says non-staining. This silicone is also something that they use in the granite and marble industries for countertops. So they'll have a silicone. This is different than the, the stuff you might buy at your Home Depot or whatever for granite countertops, and it's quite expensive. Uh, but I think that this silicone lubricant is something that I'm going to wipe this base down with first off. Um, and, and, you know, might even use it in in its entirety here across the whole thing because I don't want to don't want to start introducing other kinds of oils that might tarnish that, that marble. So I've got to get this disassembled and, and, and do quite a bit of polishing on it. I, again, I've never redone a scale like this, but the neat thing about it is that the scale is driven off of an Acme style thread so that there should be you know there, there's going to be some some bits and pieces here that I'm familiar with in in the sense that you know this is just a a sort of a, a interesting machine but shouldn't be that much different than you know a regular micrometer I mean yeah I'm not even sure what this is made by the Douglas company but it's called micrometer but all the workings and such um, aren't like a watch and like a like another scale like you might see when you go into the grocery store or something like that so in in, the, in that case I would be you know I probably wouldn't even touch it but in this case I'm confident that I can come through and clean polish and paint all the sections that need to be clean polished and painted and you know this is just a uh, an interesting project and I think uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun and I can't wait to get started on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and dive right in. I'm going to give you sort of an aerial perspective as I work on this and bring you in from time to time to show you some of the, the more interesting parts.
All right, so by and large, I have this essentially disassembled for the main components. What I've what I've got to figure out now is is this mechanism here. I can't quite tell how it comes apart, and and I don't want to rush into trying to figure out this until I sort of need to do a little bit of a cleanup with the wire wheel or something like that and then evaluate and see if these caps come off or see if there's a pin or something held in there or you know if it's more complex than that I, I don't know but right now I'm going to leave this piece as, as a whole and sort of go over what I've seen so far the thing that was interesting is there's a piece of paper that was jammed in here and I'm not sure this, and I can't quite make out what that piece of paper is but I don't know if that was some sort of a shim to to make up for some out of roundness that that happens to go along with this. This the surface here is sort of imperfect, but I can't tell whether that's because of some schmoo that's been s spilled on it. There's lots of different weird stuff in here. I went through and took a, a small pick. I, I don't know what this was, or but it's great for cleaning out flathead bolts. I went through and cleaned out every single one of them. And then was able to get everything loose without any without any problem, with the exception of this larger bolt here. And I'm confident that I will be able to get it out. But what I want to do is clean this up first, and, and get it in the best possible scenario to, to have it uh, come out. I've got some materials here that I'm not exactly sure what they are. There's some sort of feet here that are you know not quite rubber, maybe bakelite. I I don't know. Um, another material that I'm really unsure of is these blocks, which if you, it's hard to see there, but they, they almost look like they're glass. They are clear, and they do not have any scratches on them, and I don't know how tough they are. You now they, I, I, there's, there's a lot of residual material. Uh, this, this whole thing needs to be cleaned up first. So when I clean these up, I think I'll, I'll, I don't know. But, uh, but I've got to go through and maybe just clean these little corners out by hand. Uh, again, I want to be very delicate and do a nice job on this. And, uh, but, uh, but anyway, so that's the main disassembly part for right now. Um, the marble, of course, has some, some serious cleanup that's needed here. From the little bit of research that I've done so far, the method that I think I'm going to apply here is you know just going to take it over to the sink inside when Catherine's not watching and uh, and clean this up with just some soap and water and then after the soap and water I've, I've ordered some magic erasers uh, I heard of magic erasers do a pretty good job with countertops and then if that doesn't really get this cleaned up then some water and some 2000 grit sandpaper and then finish it with the silicone sealer but I'm open to suggestions if somebody has a better uh, method for cleaning this up by all means let me know the paint on this because it's an old scale it's sort of hard to find color not sort of hard it's nearly impossible to find a good color rendition of what this thing looked like initially from the little bit of paint scraps that I that I can see on the inside of here and just the little hints that I see here and there uh, I think this may have been gold or silver well this may have been silver but then parts of this were gold again a lot of this is unclear to me how it's going to clean up. I don't know what... I assume there's some brass in here. Um, I, again, it's, it's just sort of all new to me, so I'm just going to sort of figure it out as I go. I guess the next prudent course of action would be to just start wire wheeling pieces and then seeing how it cleans up. Maybe some media blasting of this base. Uh, I do not, do not want to media blast these sections here, at least without taping that off until I do more research to figure out what these, these guides are. Again, these these are going to be, you know, the, this is the precision part of this machine here. Because there's little, little V guides, if you can see that V right there, that, that ride into those. And that's what gives this this precise balancing action. And these are, these are remarkably precise instruments, so. Again, just want to be careful with this thing. And, um, all right, let me figure out what I'm going to do next. And given the vintage of this, I think that it, before I go wire wheeling on anything, I think the prudent course of action would be to go through and use some citrus strip 
and remove this paint as much as I can because invariably this, uh, you know, it stands to reason this is going to have a lot of lead in it. So uh, anyway, I'm going to use a citrus strip and try to remove this as as, as chemically as I can, and that's going to keep it from being uh, turned into particulate and then being aspirated. So anyway. I got a good dust mask, but there's no reason to leave anything to chance, so we'll go that route with this. Alright, so here's the hopper. It is in very rough shape, and it, it appears to me to be, you know, it's plated on one side. Be all brass, and it it almost feels like there's two pieces to it. Well, I'm sure there's two pieces to it because there's a seam, and it and it just doesn't feel. At least the edges have two pieces. It's it's sort of hard for me to tell exactly what's going on, but yeah, there's there's an inner and an outside shell to this. So I'm not sure that the dents or anything in here are something that I feel compelled to take out of it. I think I just want to make this look better. I'm not worried about getting it, you know, back to the way it was when it was brand new. I'm just worried about getting this back to the point where it looks better. So, with the last fire extinguisher thing I did, uh, the Brasso would work pretty good on that. So, I gotta thank you for all the people that recommended that. I'm gonna try a little test spot here. and see how that works out. And then, uh, this is probably going to be very, very labor intensive, so there's not going to be a lot of this. And, uh, or if, if this is in the, uh, the video, it's going to be a time lapse with some, some music. So you should have just seen some footage of, okay, so this is what it looked like initially, and then I hit it with the Brasso and the scotch Bright pad, and then when I hit it with the, with the, the red roof for brass, you can see that it's, you know, it's pretty shiny. It's not smooth, so it's sort of hard for me to show you your reflection in it. But it, but it can get even smoother. That was just a couple of seconds with the, that polishing wheel in there. And what this is, is a, it's like a wool wheel on this die grinder. And that does a pretty good job. I have some new wire wheels that are supposed to come in in a day or so. And they're soft. You can see that wire wheels sometimes will have different segments of thread in there to sort of hold them together. Uh, I've got three different kinds coming in. So, so I'm going to experiment around with those a little bit towards the end because those will be like the fine, fine polishing sections of, of that. Uh, now I'm going to goof around with the back of this and see what I should do with this because I, I really don't know what, what I should do. So let me just start cleaning this up and see how that works out.
this is something I don't show too much on the channel. I've got a little pencil grinder. Pneumatic. Just turn to control here. I mean, it really whoops around fast. So that turned out pretty good. I think there's still a little bit of room for improvement in terms of cleaning this up, but this is going to get handled quite a few more times. And I think what's going to have to happen is this will all go together, probably get assembled and disassembled and assembled and disassembled as I sort of refit everything. <laughs> Invariably, I'll put something back wrong and you know have to keep handling this stuff. But anyway, I, I'm I'm pretty happy with how the inside came out. It's it's quite a bit better looking than it was. Again, I'm not too worried about the dents. This has got double layered in here, so I don't I don't think that it's worth taking a chance on this. I'm very happy how the back looks on this. See, it's almost got a wet look to it, and that is just, you know, it's not wet, trust me. Uh, but I went over this with the red roux on the buffing wheel very, very lightly, again, because I don't want to remove anything that's here. I just wanted to remove any of the you know, just the the shelfware, if you will, uh, for lack of a better term, that that these things build up when they just sit around. Even though this side was, of course, facing down, it didn't collect as much stuff on it. But you know, there's still sort of residual, just smooth that stuff accumulates. And that's all clean. It's you know, it's nice and smooth now. I uh, I really am happy with the finish on this one, and I think it's going to look nice when it's all said and done with, even with the wear and tear. Um, so anyway, that's that's pretty good. The Citrus strip seems to be working pretty well on the base for this. It's outside right now drying. Now, now what I think I'm going to have to work on, and this this video is going to be a couple parts, so you know I'm just going to keep working along. The vial I mentioned earlier has got some issues, and of course I was happy to see that I could disassemble it because there's a screw here, but there also should be a screw here, and that that looks pretty rugged. So I'm going to. I'm going to see if I can't get that cleaned out. See what's left. Uh, there might not even be a head there to contend with, but, but right now this... I did... I've been doing some research on the internet, and they do sell these pieces. They, eBay does have things available, but this is $150 plus shipping with the vial. Again, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to pay that if I don't have to. So, so anyway, let me see if I can't get this out of here, and, uh, and I'll try to get a good shot of this so you can see what I'm doing. So in order to get this cleaned up enough to where I can sort of tell what's going on there, I want to use a wire brush. And, and I could use the bench grinder to come in here and try to take this out of there. But, you know, in the interest of getting a decent shot, you can actually see what's going on. I want to use a die grinder to do this. So while well, I'm doing this, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about the types of wire wheels that are on there. And, and this might be repetitive for some people that have been with the channel for a while, but, you know, sometimes it's helpful for the new people. And uh, and I just sort of want to talk about, uh, you know, how, what to be leery of when you're buying wire wheels. Wire wheels can come in a gradation of different size wires. You can see here that the wires on this brush, this is made by Wyler, and it's a number 10001. Uh, I'll put I'm trying to remember to put links in the description for this stuff because I get a lot of comments about like, oh, what am I using? These are both Wyler brand. I've had relatively good luck with these. And just because a wire brush wears down doesn't mean it's bad. This is also a Wyler brush. This has, you know, a decent amount of time on it. And it eventually just will break out. Um, but, so anyway, there's different brands. But be leery of the cheap ones. Also, if you're getting, if you're new to wire wheels or new to, to air tools and things like that, these spin at a much, much, much higher RPM than a regular drill does. I mean, your drill is going to get, you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand RPM or something like that. When these can go upwards of, you know, 25, 35,000 RPM. And there's all sorts of different kinds. You know, I've got this long shaft one 
with another. This is also a Weiler, sort of broader brush thing. Uh, this doesn't get a lot of use, but you know, when I really need to get into somewhere, inside of a, a hub or something like that where the bearing was at, uh, stuff like this is indispensable. So, the, the other thing is, other people have seen me talk about this, I have, you know, 20 different die grinders. They're cheap, and I don't like changing bits on them. Uh, and they, they do have basically two different sizes. But what I do to keep all my stuff together is I weld it all together on a piece of sash chain. I have, this is for the DeWalt four and a half inch angle grinder. This is for my cutoff wheel. This is the large two sizes that fit die grinders. These are the small two sizes. And when you hook them together on a chain, <laughs> it, it makes it much harder to lose. So, so that's sort of helpful. A lot of people, are reluctant to get into the air tool business because air compressors are inherently loud. They're obnoxious and they can be expensive. So people don't don't buy this stuff. I am lucky enough to own a big Gardner Denver that I got out of a scrapyard that works really well. It's outside the shop and even then it's still relatively quiet. Much quieter than what you would buy in modern day stuff. Do not buy an oil free air compressor my opinion, you know, if somebody's going to argue with me, that's fine. I would not recommend ever buying an oil-free air compressor. I've had two of them. I gave one away. The other one died on me. They're just, they're just built like crap. Um, but, you know, one thing that, I, that seems to be a very effective tool for, especially for smaller projects, is a, is, a der, is a Dremel tool. I don't own a Dremel tool. I just have this pencil grinder. I, I'm going to try it. We'll see if it, it might be useful to get into this. But they also sell, the, these are quarter-inch collets. These, these have quarter inch round shank. Square shank invariably are low RPM. Do not buy square shank stuff for die grinders. It doesn't work. They do sell eighth inch collets for much smaller. This is a carbide burr that's, that I've got chucked in this. But I can also chuck, you know, Dremel tools with these things. So you can buy, this tool probably cost me nine bucks. And you get an air compressor and you buy the Dremel tool stuff. And this is much, much, much more powerful than than, you know, any cheapo Dremel tool. I don't have anything against Dremel tools. However, if I chose to buy one, I'm just looking for a deal on it. I would like the one that hangs from a pedestal and has a flexible shaft and a foot control. I preferably like one that has a hand control on it. That way I don't have to worry about keeping the pedal underneath the, the, the workbench here because that's where I keep all my scrap metal. So, it adds some stability to the bench, so that's the method behind the madness there. So anyway, let me quit rambling on about this stuff and try to zoom me in here and get a shot of me trying to figure out how to get this piece off of here because my I've got some levels on the way and I'd like to be able to repair this. got this one loose. I cleaned everything out of there. It actually smelled like coffee when I was cleaning this schmoo out of here. This one's loose. This one is not budging. But I'm hoping that before I start heading down the path of trying to extricate this screw, if I unscrew this one, maybe I can turn this bezel, turn this level part here, and get it to unscrew from there and pull the screw out without having to, you know, get real complicated with this. I've tried hitting it with a drift. I've tried, you know, using an impact uh, with a nice crisp new bit in there and it just walked the head of the screw right off of there so so anyway let me try to get this other one out of here and then uh, see if we can't unscrew it from the other side probably not hot anymore I had this in the little drill press vise so now can I turn this ha look at that so I'm able to turn that, but the screw is still stuck. Which gives me some hope. Probably should have done this first. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to keep fighting with this. See if I can't get this off of here. 
And then, uh, oh, look at that. So now I have this all disassembled. Theoretically, I wouldn't need to actually take this all apart, but, uh, it would be extremely hard to clean this up if this is still in there. So anyway, I'm going to fight with that and uh, get that out of there. How's this for a goofy setup? Now, there's not a lot to work with in there, and I've seen some guys where they try to TIG weld bolts and stuff back into broken holes, and they do all sorts of amazing stuff. And ever, for some reason, every time I watch somebody do that, except, except for Andrew Camarta, I mean, he's got a pretty neat channel, everybody else besides Andrew nails it the first time and it works perfectly and they just keep moving right along. Uh, I have a feeling this may or may not work. Either I hate it. Wait, wait. It, I have a feeling this will not work. But, you know, it's worth a shot. You know, and I've never tried it before. So I'm going to weld this flathead bit into the end of that screw and we'll see what happens. The end of this looks like it's copper so we shouldn't have any problem with that sticking or anything like that. So let me fire up the little MIG welder and see if that works. Alright, so I've welded the tip of this screwdriver onto what was left of the head of that. And I'm going to hold this down here. Being careful not to grab that on the knurls because it's the aesthetic component. Ha! Ah. Look at that. So I was able to just catch on the head of that. That's a horrible weld, you know. <laughs> I managed to get a hold of it. Just one one tiny spot over there melt the head off. And that's relatively unscathed. So, you know, now I can clean this up. And look at all. It's amazing the stuff that gets caught in there. No idea what that is. Anyway. Work on getting this cleaned up and uh, start polishing this. You may have seen me put gloves on in the middle of it when I was buffing this. And I usually have a non-contact thermometer. Non-contact thermometer is the little trigger type ones. They don't work good on reflective surfaces anyway. But but anyway, this has been a, a minute or two since I took it off the buffer and it, it gets pretty hot. And you know, the gloves are very helpful for it. And, and even then the gloves sometimes aren't enough and you have to sort of take a break, just keep rotating the piece. But so that's that's looking quite a bit better than it was. However, there's still a bunch of the the roux, the compound that actually gets caught down in here, and and you, it's you can see that it's actually like a mud that's that's stuck down in there, and all that needs to come out. And and I've had this instance on at a couple other projects, but what I think happens is that the like the brasso actually becomes a very good cleaner. For this kind of stuff. I've tried brake parts cleaner and all sorts of other stuff early on and, and nothing really worked well. Uh, I'm not sure what I had on this rag before, but anyway, the Brasso was a, does a really good job of removing that rubbing compound on there. So what I think I need to do now is just get down and do some, some hand work on this and try to clean that stuff out of there. And this might be another good application for the pencil grinder with the small polishing wheel on it. See if I can really get down in there and clean this out nicely. So, But anyway, that's still looking pretty good. Uh, even for it probably being less than halfway done. Alright, so I'm starting to gather that they may have painted behind these letters here, and that still looks good. I don't think I'll have to do anything there. But I can obviously see that there's just dirt stuck in the some of the letters there. Uh, it's starting to get pretty pretty close to where I want it, but you know I I want to get this patina out of these corners and grooves and whatnot. And I think the best bet for that is to continue using the brasso and this toothbrush. 
<laughs> now this toothbrush is interesting because these rubber things are supposed to be much smaller. They used to be just about in line with the handle. And I just left this in the parts washer and the parts washing fluid has very interesting effects on stuff that's not metal. So be leery. Be careful about putting screwdrivers with rubber handles and stuff in there because it'll just, you know, I've seen it's, I had another toothbrush in there and the whole toothbrush just broke into a million pieces. Uh, this swells up like, you know, it's really gross. It's like snot. But anyway, yeah, be careful about putting stuff in the parts washer. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. I've got a pretty decent polish on some of it. However, there's still some grit and grime trapped down into these parts here. And I can see that something is, for whatever reason, has cleaned this section up very nicely. But then this section, you know, I thought I scrubbed everything just about equally. Perhaps I should leave some brasso on this to sort of soak and, and let it really sit in and do its job. And come back. If anybody has any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. But other than that, I'm going to say that this is going to conclude part one. And I, in part two, I think I'll probably move on to the painting side of these things. And, and you know, this is going to be, you know, probably at least three parts. Um, because reassembly is going to probably be its own video. So I've still got painting to do and I still have the the actual weight and acme screw and all that other stuff to contend with. I'm going to research the patent drawings. Hopefully those will be uh, illustrative of what I what I will need to do on that other part. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and uh, have a good day.